So you've probably heard me say over the last six to nine months that I believe what is in front of us will likely be a white collar recession. Not a blue collar recession, not a recession like all others that we've experienced, but very much a white collar recession. So what I want to do here is have a conversation with someone I know, trust and respect, Anna Kelly, and see what she thinks, because I am wrong all the time. How you doing, Anna? <laughs> I'm great. Great to be here. You're not wrong all the time. You're right a lot, but sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it happens. It happens to the best of us. When you take as many Absolutely. shots as I do, uh, you're going to miss a few. Uh, Absolutely. But- but I wanted to talk about what is coming because I, I think we both agree that a recession is coming. I'm on the side that it's going to be shallower than average, but longer than average. Uh, but something you and I haven't talked about yet that I think is important because I would love to get your opinion on, especially if you disagree, is I think this recession is going to be led as or called in, in history books a white collar recession. I think we've already seen it in the mortgage industry. We're seeing it now in the real estate industry. I think we're seeing it in Wall Street. Goldman Sachs says 8%. Just today, Salesforce said 10%. We've already seen Meta, Amazon, all of these things. So again, I think it is going to be white collar led, not blue collar. Again, I think there is lots of job openings for what would be called blue collar work. I think their wages are going up. I think it's you know a trade is the place to be, really safe. Uh, so I think this recession will be white collar. And if I'm right, that might have ripple effects, but w- we'll start there. What do you think? White collar recession or something else? Yeah, I like that you said white collar led. I think that this recession is going to be pretty diffuse across all industries. And okay. the reason I say that is when I look at um, CPI, what's gone up and what's come down, what's really coming down quickly is goods and serv- is goods more so than services. And so it's things like products that we're buying, right? And so to some extent, those things are put together by blue collar workers. And as people produce less stuff, companies produce less stuff, you're going to have people that make stuff laid off. So there is blue collar. Wage inflation, though, is really elevated in the services sector. And that's to your point, that's more blue collar. And so blue collar has higher wages. There's people still using services. There's people still shopping um, at dining out, going to hotels and traveling, et cetera. So in the services sector, they're actually that CPI is not coming down almost at all, Michael. So people are still spending money and wages are still high. So if you're in the services industry, you're probably not going to be hit quite as hard to your point as someone who might work at Amazon or Google, because they automatically have these products they're having to lay off and they're laying off, especially in the tech and the financial services sector. Yeah, and I think it's going to be really, really interesting because I, I actually think the layoffs in the big names like Salesforce just today announcing 10% over 7,000 heads. I think what we suffered through the last two years is I'm, I'm going to call it an arms race for talent. I'm not really sure what else to call it, but you sure. know, in the Silicon Valley where I live, there's kind of 10 or 20 tech companies that rule the roost, right? They can pay more than anyone else and they were competing for talent. So I think what you're seeing now is a lot of them admit that they've overhired. Yes. Mark Benioff actually said that in the press release today that they overhired. So they're reducing. But I think it's going to be really interesting because at least in the beginning, maybe the first 90 days of this, when you are one of those 7,000 that are laid off, it is going to be remarkably easy, I think, to get a job somewhere else because that arms race is over. There's this second tier of companies that are starving for talent that are ready to hire. Now they're not going to pay as well as Salesforce or Meta or have the RSU nonsense, but people will find jobs. Uh, The question is how long does that go on? Right. The first wave of layoffs, easy. Second, probably easy. Third, fourth, not sure. And I don't know if we have four rounds, but that's kind of how I look at this. Cause I think, I think what we saw is the the top 20 software companies in the Valley overhired and really squeezed out everybody else. Uh, What do you think of that? Yeah, I I agree with you there. And I will say a lot of the tech companies too are zombie companies are very, very close. So basically, you know, their their earnings are not quite covering their debt. They're using a lot of private funding in order to be able to survive and grow and thrive and innovate. And so I think there's a lot more pain when you look at a recession for a tech company who does not already have, you know, strong capital balances and has a lot of this variable startup debt. 
especially there, I think there's going to be pain. So, so I agree with you there. I think there's, it's going to be painful, but I also just want to point out, you said, especially if I disagree with you to play devil's yeah, advocate, a little please. Bit, you know, if you look at the housing market, this is definitely the hardest hit sector so far as housing. And that's primarily blue collar jobs. There's a lot of trickle down jobs in the economy that are Absolutely. related to housing. And you, you'd look at, you know, mortgage officers and you'd probably say that that's white collar. But I think that because housing is suffering, I think that the recession for those that are involved in any line of construction work can actually be hit hard, if not just as hard as in tech. So when I say I think the recession is going to be diffuse, I think it's going to be across many, many, many sectors if okay. the Fed continues to target wages and services, you'll finally start to see that lag. So tech leading, housing as well, and then start to trickle down into the rest. But I think there's going to be pain ahead for everybody. Um, okay. But if you're in construction or tech, I think you, you've you got it harder, uh, yeah. unless you're an HVAC or an electrician or yeah. a plumber, because those problems happen all the time, whether yeah. people are buying that doesn't selling change. houses. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I love that the way you're thinking. When you when you look at what's in front of us, um, I think Mark Zandi from Moody's Analytics said yesterday, the day before, in a tweet that I saw, that we're going to have a. He's calling it, I think, a slow session. Basically, we're going to have positive GDP growth, but sub one percent. So not technically a recession, but it's going to feel like what you've been telling us: stagflation. Uh, yes. I think you called that first. Uh, several weeks, if not months ago, I, I want to give you your flowers. You're absolutely right. I think that's that's the leading. That's my base case, right? Right for the next year to year and a half, it's it's just going to feel like we're stuck in mud. So, bring us home on that concept and what that might look like. Absolutely, and and yeah, we started talking about this about a year ago because we realized that inflation is really high, but but growth is on a downward trend as well, and we were already you know, sneaking up on recessionary territory. And people tend to think very, um, you know, black and white, it's either recession or it's inflation. And the reality is you can have both. It doesn't happen very often, but stagflation is essentially when you have a slowdown in the economy, a slowdown of growth, but at the same time, certain sectors of the economy have elevated inflation. And it's really difficult for the Fed to get us out of because the tools to get you out of inflation are to slow down the economy. The tools to get you out of recession is to speed up the economy. And so they have opposite battles. They're trying to get this perfect balance to try to keep us from going into a deep recession while targeting inflation. So for some time, as we talked about in one of our prior videos today, when you look at inflation, it's persistent, especially with wages and employment and the poor services. And so I think that that's gonna stay elevated if the war with Russia and Ukraine is prolonged, and if there's any escalation with China, you can see energy and food CPI stay high, even though it's coming down, it could go right back high. So I think that when you look at wages, you look at you know energy and food, the Fed can only target wages by trying to create a soft recession, just enough to bring employment and wages down to get us to stop spending so much and bring down inflation where they can, where it's demand side. But the supply side inflation, that can be sticky and stay even while growth is really slowing. So that means a slow inflation to, to Zandi's point and to your point, we could have a year or two where we have both a yeah. slowdown in growth, recession, layoffs, wages coming down and still have elevated prices for a while. It's just gonna take some time to work itself out. So I think you mentioned at the beginning of this video, a longer recession, not super deep, but longer. Um, I don't know how deep it's gonna be. It depends on a lot of these outside factors. Global recession means it could be deeper you know, for all of us. But I do think that this is a longer recession than average because of this elevated inflation being fought you know, with recession, the Fed just can't get us out of it as quickly, in my opinion. Yeah, I I, I like the way you're thinking. Anna, you do a lot of amazing stuff. Where can people follow you? You can follow me here on my playlist every Wednesday on our show. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly REI Mom and my website REIMom.com. Thank you so much. Thank you.